Hi. So continuing with um, measurement with the metric system, let's try a couple applications. So the first one I have is if you have a prescription uh, for 5,000 milligrams of medicine, and upon getting it filled, the dosage reads five grams of medicine on the label. And that should alarm you because <laughs> it doesn't say 5,000 milligrams. So um, did the pharmacist make a mistake or like what would you need to know in order to determine whether if the pharmacist made a mistake, right? So the one thing would be to see how many milligrams are in a gram and convert 5,000 milligrams into grams. So let's go ahead and try that. So the goal here, or the real question would be, is 5,000 milligrams equivalent to 5 grams, right? And some of you may already see that it is, right? So if I wanted to convert um, 5,000 milligrams to grams, then um, we could go ahead and do this a couple of ways, right? We could first say, well, I'm going from I'm going from small to large, right? I'm going from that milligram to that gram. So I would divide by how many decimal places over two grams, right? And then we would see that, okay, well, here's milligram and here's gram, and it's one, two, three decimal places to the left, and we could go ahead and take 5,000 milligrams and divide by that 10 to the cube, right? Three places to the left, and you would divide by 10 to that many decimal places. And when we do that, we get 5 grams. Um, and the other way would be just to do um, convert using using a conversion factor. So then you could take the 5,000 milligrams and put it over one like we're used to and multiply by the fact that one gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. And then you would see that the milligrams would reduce out and you're left with 5,000 grams over 1,000. And then we would see that that would be equivalent to 5 grams. So either way, you would get the same information. It just depends how you want to use that metric system, especially when you're going left and right on that um, metric system that we learned in the very beginning. Other, in any case, the, we still haven't answered the question, right? Is, did the pharmacist make a mistake? And we would say, no. There was no mistake. Because 5,000 milligrams is equivalent to 5 grams. Okay, and so this is kind of like what we want to, our goal is, right? And so if we keep going with the applications, let's try, let's try to build up to a more, you know, um, challenging problem. So in this next one, it says in one boxer weighs in at 85 kilograms and he is 80 dags heavier than his opponent. How much does his opponent weigh? Well, first of all, notice that there, one is 85 kilograms, the other one is 80 dags, but it's really decagrams. So um, 85 kilograms and then 80 dags, which is um, 80, and let me spell it out, decagrams. Okay, so that I think that would be the first thing we would need to know, right? Because dag looks kind of like dog, and it's not. Um, okay, so this one boxer and his opponent, right? So here's the boxer, and here's the opponent. So this boxer weighs 85 kilograms, 
which is equal to um, 80 dags heavier than his opponent. So whatever weight his opponent is, we would add 85 or 80 dags more to that to get the boxer's weight. So the boxer is 85 kilograms, but that's heavier. So heavier means you would add the weight on to the opponent, right? So whatever the opponent weighs, I would add 80 decagrams to get the boxer's weight. So I think the real issue is um, the difference in the units, right? We have to get them all either all in decagrams or all in kilograms. Um, how much does his opponent weigh? So it doesn't necessarily tell us that now we have to convert to pounds or to kilograms or decagrams. I think we can go ahead and use our own like common knowledge and personal knowledge to make the best decision. So um, what I could see here is it's going to be a little bit of arithmetic. So what I'm going to do is find put everything in the same number of units. And then at that point, I could go ahead and subtract 80 decagrams from 85 kilograms and get that opponent's weight. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and, and start that. So the first question is, um, we're gonna have to convert. And personally, decagrams isn't used too often, maybe more in like labs, but I think commonly in society we use like kilo a lot like kilo kilometers right and so um, we'll go ahead and convert to kilograms so we'll convert the decagrams to kilograms so um, 80 decagrams and put it over one and then we'll multiply by some conversion factor so let's go ahead and go back to our ginormous table and see what we can do there So we can see here that decagrams, here's the dam, the DA, right? The decameter, we're in decagrams though, we're just doing G. Um, there is 10, right? There is one decameter is 10 meters or one decagram is 10 grams. So we know that there's 10 and it's m longer than a meter. Okay. and. Um, if we go all the way to the very beginning, um, here's the DECA that we were looking at, the DA. And so we could see that from kilogram to decagram, it goes one, two. There's two decimal places. And I'm going from DECA to kilo, so I would have to divide by that power of 10. So I would have one, two, and I would, so that means two decimal places would mean I would divide by 10 squared. So you could either just divide by 10 squared or we could use conversion factors here and go from um, decagrams to grams and then from grams to kilograms. So either you can divide by 10 squared or I'm gonna go ahead and show the conversion factors just to be consistent to what we're, we've been doing. Okay, and so we know that we have 10 grams per one decagram times one kilogram per 1,000 grams. So we can see that we can easily uh, reduce out grams and decagrams and we're left with 80 times 10, which is 800, divided by 1 times 1 times 1,000, so 1,000, and then kilograms. So we can easily see that um, if we reduce out the zeros here, we get 8 over 10, 8 tenths, which is 0.8 kilograms. So if I go here, notice that I would have 80 decagrams is actually equivalent to 0.8 kilograms. So following this little tiny um, fun picture, I would have to now find the opponent's weight. So I would have 85 kilograms equal to 80 decagrams plus the opponent's weight. And so therefore I would rewrite 
that decagrams to be not 80 decagrams but 0.8 kilograms and then plus the opponent's weight. And therefore, I would subtract 0.8 from each side. And then the opponent's weight is now equal to 85 minus 0.8, which is 84.2 kilograms. So therefore, the opponent's weight is 84.2 kilograms. So the goal here is to um, rewrite it in the same units. And we could have used all decagrams. It's really up to us. And we could have got um, 800, 800, 8,000, 8,420 decagrams. But we use kilograms again because that's what we commonly see is the kilo in like our society in the real world. So um, we just converted everything to kilograms. And then from there, we went ahead after we converted you know, we went ahead and just subtracted that number of kilograms from the boxer's weight and then got the opponent's weight. So again, remember, we can only do operations if the, um, the units are the same. So look, let's look at this next one. This next one is um, a two liter bottle contains 87 centiliters of oil and 4.1 deciliters of water. How much more liquid is needed to fill the bottle? So what this is saying, so if we draw like a little picture here of this two liter bottle. Okay, and then there's that. There we go. <laughs> it's saying that 87, and this isn't drawn to scale, right? So 87.1 centiliters is filled of oil and 4.1 deciliters is filled with water. And so they want to know, well, how much more liquid of anything do you need to fill the bottle? So we're looking for this piece here. And that's all it's saying. So what we do know is that no matter what, that two liters is equal to the sum of all these um, amounts, right? And so we have 87 centiliters plus 4.1 deciliter plus some other amount that we need to figure out. So essentially, you know, using the same idea as the previous example, we could just take the two liters and subtract the 87 centiliters and the 4.1 deciliters to get the question mark, right? Just subtract it all out and see what, see what little is left. Now, we have to be careful here because we notice that we have a liter, a centiliter, and deciliter. So we're going to have to go ahead and rewrite everything. In fact, I would rewrite everything in liters because um, it's a two liter bottle. So it would only make sense to put it, our answer in liters. So let's go ahead and start the problem now. So the first thing we'll wanna do is convert to liters. Okay, so the first one is 87 centiliters, and I'll throw that over one times, and then centi is 100 away from liters. So let's go back up here. So here's centimeters, but we're doing liters. Notice that one liter is equal to 100 centiliters. So here we're going to have um, one liter per 100 centiliters. And so if we do that, then we get centiliters reduced out and we get 87 divided by 100, which is 0.87 liters. Okay, and I'll put a little star because we're going to use that in a second. 
The next one we have to convert is 4.1 deciliters. I'll throw that over one. Now deciliters, if we go back to that conversion factor table, is um, here's decimeters, which is deciliters, and we see that 10 deciliters is equal to one meter, or in this case, deciliters is equal to one liter. So here we would have one liter per 10 deciliters. Okay, and then we see that we can reduce out, and it is 4.1 times 1 divided by 1 times 10, so it's 4.1 divided by 10, so we have to move the decimal over and get 0.41 liters. Okay, and then the 2 liter is already in liters, so we're all set. So now we can go ahead and find the remaining liquid needed. So all we have to do now is take the 2 liters and subtract the 0.87 liters minus the 0.41 liters. And that'll give us this green area of what's left. Okay, so if we just go to our calculator, we can go to minus 0.87 minus 0.41. and we get 0.72. And so that is um, what's left that's needed to fill the rest of the bottle. So it'll be 0.72 liters. So once again, you can see the pattern here is always to get everything in the same units. And then once you do that, then you go ahead and notice the problem is quite simple, right? It's a quick subtraction problem. And the same thing with the previous one with the with the weights, right? They had to just be in the same units and then a simple subtraction problem. Whereas with the medicine problem, notice that they weren't in the same unit, so we had to figure out whether the pharmacist knew what they, what they were doing, right? And they they did. They just wrote it probably to save a little ink. Okay.